Okay, let's consider this very interesting section, 12.6, rolling motion. What do we mean by rolling motion? Well, we mean any time, say, a wheel or an object rolls on the ground um, without slipping. Okay? Without slipping. So let me... Okay, so you got this object on the ground and it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling, just like a tire on the, on the ground or anything like that. And th so this is called rolling motion or rolling without slipping. It's important, there's no slip, there's no kinetic friction over here, okay? Rolling without slipping or rolling motion. Okay, so what we've seen so far is basically two types of motion in this, uh, in the uh, in the rotation kind of s section that we've been looking at. The one we've looked at is if you have an object that's fixed about an axis and it rotates. Here, it has only rotation and it has no translation of the center of mass. No translation of the center of mass because it's fixed, meaning it, it can't translate. It can only rotate. Then the other one that we looked at was, so this is called fixed, right? Remember that, fixed rotation. Anything that's fixed and it can't, it, it, the center of mass cannot translate. And the other one is free, if you remember, free rotation. And was that like, this was basically if you've got like a frisbee and it's rotating, but at the same time as rotating, its center of mass is also translating. So it's moving in, a, in some kind of trajectory, okay? So free rotation um, is different to fixed in that it, has, it also has rotation, but now its center of mass can also translate where, whereas this couldn't. And wh what's very important here, guys, is that this motion, the rotational motion and the velocity of the center of mass. So this, this rotation, the rotation here and the velocity of the center of mass are uncoupled. What does that mean? It means that they do not, they are independent. Independent. One does not depend on the other one. Does that make sense? I, I hope you can see that. For example, you could take a frisbee and throw it to me such that it has a certain uh, velocity of the center of mass, but you threw it so that it hardly has any rotation. Okay, almost no rotation. You could, you could maybe, I don't know how, but you could try to throw it so that its rotation is very low, but it's got a certain um, velocity of its center of mass. A another time, you could throw it with the same, the same velocity of the center of mass, but you could really spin that guy. And then it has a very high rotation. So the point is that with free rotation, the velocity of your center of mass and the angular velocity is independent. They are independent of each other. They are independent of each other. However, when it comes to rolling without slipping, if we've got our center of mass and it has a velocity of the center of mass, and there is uh, the angular velocity, we will see that these with this specific case, this is a kind of an intermediary, intermediary case, an intermediary case where the velocity of the center of mass and the angular momentum are coupled. The one is dependent on the other one. Okay? All right, so that's a good opener. Uh, we'll carry on in the next one.